Welcome! Here is a list of 10 beautiful theorems in elementary number theory. Note that elementary doesn't mean that it's easy. They deal with elementary concepts like integers or primes. The first theorem is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It tells that every integer has a unique prime factorization, unique up to the order of the factors. Like here we have a repeated unit integer the top and it decays into primes. Primes are the building blocks of all numbers. The little theorem of Fermat is uh, one of the cornerstones of modern cryptology. It tells that the pth power of an integer minus the integer itself is a multiple of p, as long as p is prime. So here's an example with p equal to 7 and a equal to 2. We know that uh, we compute that a to the p minus a is 126, which is indeed divisible by 7. The theorem rephrases that in the multiplicative group of non-zero numbers modulo p, any element different from 1 generates the entire group. So here we see Pierre de Fermat, who proved that theorem. Wilson's theorem characterizes prime numbers through a single congruence. That tells that the number n minus 1 factorial plus 1 is divisible by n if and only if n is prime. So for example, for n equal to 5, we have 4 factorial plus 1 is divisible by 5, and indeed 5 is prime. It has been anticipated by Ibn al-Haytham, was announced by Waring and named after Wilson, is named after John Wilson, whom, he, whom we see here. First proof was given by Lagrange. The prime number theorem is a deeper theorem, giving the asymptotics of the number of primes. It tells that the number of primes smaller or equal to n grows like n over log n. So here we see the graph of that function pi of x, uh, we see that it's kind of approaching more and more 1. We see also to the left Jacques Adamar and to the right Charles de la vallée poussin who proved the theorem first. <coughs> the Legendre symbol p over q is defined to be 1 if p is a square modulo q. Uh, let's just call a prime a fermion if it is of the form 4k minus 1, otherwise we call it a boson. The theorem tells what happens if we switch the two primes in this Legendre symbol. The sign changes only if both of the primes are fermions. So here's an example, 7 and 3 are both fermions because they are of the form 4k minus 1. 7 over 3 is 1 because 7 is a quadratic residue. 3 is not a quadratic residue, modulo 7 cannot be written as a square. And so they are, have different signs. The Christmas theorem deals with primes of the form 4k plus 1, with bosons. It tells that bosons decay into two particles, a plus ib, a and a minus ib in the complex plane. So if you take the product of the two, you get indeed a squared plus b squared, which is p. So here we see a picture of the Gaussian primes. These are the building blocks in the complex plane. And you see that primes of which are bosons, like uh, 13. The perfect number theorem is one of the oldest theorem in number theory. It tells, characterizes even perfect numbers. They are of the form 2 to the p minus 1 times 2 to the p minus 1. It was... Euclid, who realized that if you take such a number, then it's perfect. It's the sum of its proper factors, like 6 is 1 plus 2 plus 3. And then Euler proved that all even perfect numbers are half that form. One of the oldest problems in math, maybe the oldest problem, open problem in math, is the question whether there are perfect numbers. Nobody knows. <coughs> Lagrange's theorem, and most astounding theorem, tells that every integer is a sum of four squares. So this is a theorem in four-dimensional space. Lagrange has proven this in 17 
70, like 199, is 2 squared plus 5 squared plus 7 squared plus 11 squared. And it's a theorem about four-dimensional space. So this is a tesseract illustrating four-dimensional space, a triangularization of a tesseract. Dirichlet theorems is one of the deeper theorems. Tells that along any arithmetic progression there are infinitely many primes. It generalizes the already in antiquity known fact that there are infinitely many primes. But it's more general. So if you arrange the numbers so that in a, in a rectangular array like here, then you take a row, and you know, on that row there are infinitely many primes. So this row here, they're all numbers of the form 13k plus 7, 7, 20, 33, 46, etc. There are infinitely many primes on this row. The Chinese remainder theorem, finally, one of the oldest theorems also in mathematics, de deals with a system of linear equations, modular equations, and this any simultaneous system of linear equations has a solution as long as the moduli are pair pairwise, as long as the moduli have no common divisors. So here this is illustrated in fact you have two gears, one has seven teeth, one has five teeth. You want uh, two specific teeth to come together, you can actually find a time where this happens. So that's it. Uh, these ten theorems were presented already on a chalkboard talk also on YouTube here in the year 2021, just a year ago. Not much has changed in my preferences. That's the end. <clears throat>